Time now for news from the left. First up, Twitter finally hitting NPR with some truth, calling out the shills for the liberal ruling party in this country as U.S. state-affiliated media. Twitter just slaps that on, and there's nothing they can do about it. It is so great. Musk acknowledged the new label, tweeting an image of a screenshot showing Twitter's policy defining state-affiliated media, media, writing, seems accurate. NPR is desperately trying to defend itself from this humiliation, claiming the label is untrue, and they only get 1% of their annual budget from federal sources. But, of course, by state-affiliated media, Twitter didn't just mean state-funded. NPR are just willfully compliant pawns of America's ruling party. They would be like that even if they got 0% from the federal government, and you know that. The president and CEO of NPR, this stooge, saying that they stand for freedom of speech and holding the powerful accountable. A vigorous, vibrant free press is essential to the health of our democracy. He couldn't be any more full of it if he tried. Holding the powerful accountable. Well, here's how they handled the New York Post's bombshell Hunter Biden laptop story back in 2020. The managing editor writing this with so much contempt. We don't want to waste our time on stories that are not really stories. And we don't want to waste the listeners and readers' time on stories that are just pure distractions. The arrogance of these clowns. What they meant to say was, we don't want to report any stories that might hurt Biden's chance of beating Donald Trump. That's what they meant. And they think you're too stupid to realize that. But you're not. Another great moment, CBS News reporting on this story, claiming when they emailed Twitter's press contact for more information on why NPR received this atrocious label, Twitter sent an automatic response with the poop emoji. (laughs) They just sent the poop emoji back. Maybe it's time for Twitter to start slapping that same label on CBS, CNN, MSNBC, and speaking of state-affiliated media, during a segment on ABC's Good Morning America. A reporter used a clip from Trump's speech and completely blurred out Trump's campaign text message uh, sign on the podium. You can kind of see the blurring right there underneath where he's talking. It said, text Trump to 88022, uh, and that's how they're doing some fundraising. The most important thing in politics, ABC doesn't care. Nope, we're not going to do that. This is an all-out assault on your right to choose who runs this country. They do not care anymore. It's their way or the highway. And the Democrat logo for 2024 should just be a big middle finger right in your face. The media, Democrats, Washington bureaucracy is all drunk on power, and they will fight to the death before they relinquish any of it. And they don't care how obvious they are anymore. They really don't. They just blur that out. They show a clip of Donald Trump, and they just blur that out. ABC. Next up, the same White House that's eager to turn everything into a race-baiting, America-dividing crisis, refusing to say if the Nashville school shooting where Christians were hunted and killed should be considered a hate crime. Former Vice President Pence said that if the shooter who killed six people uh, in that Christian school in Tennessee was motivated by a hatred towards Christians, that the crime should be categorized as a hate crime. I'm wondering what the president thinks of that kind of designation. It's not for us to decide. (laughs) A clear target against Christians. The Biden administration won't call it a hate crime. Of course not. Because there's one thing the Biden White House couldn't care less about, it's white Christian people. And let's remember, the real victims here are the trans community. Biden has no plans to visit the families of the Nashville victims. Tells you everything. Finally, a new Canadian bill would make it illegal and a criminal offense for anybody who misgenders a trans person, even though I can't tell which side they're on half the time. Uh, It will also give you a fine if you protest against drag shows and a bunch of naked people dancing for little kids. It enables the attorney general to create a 2S LGBTQI plus community safety zone to prohibit within 100 meters of the property any homophobic, transphobic act of intimidation, threat, offensive threats, offensive remarks, protest, disturbance and distribution of hate propaganda within the meaning of the uh, criminal code. It also comes with it a penalty of $25,000 if prosecuted successfully. Just wanted to show you that because it was such a hilarious looking press conference. A $25,000 fine in prison time for using the wrong pronouns. You better really really be careful before you say something because you might just accidentally find yourself at a $25,000 fine even if you didn't mean to. Welcome to Canada. Don't worry, it'll be coming here in about a year.